Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. You might know me from some of my Windows 8 videos. Feel free to check out the rest of the channel. I've got lots of information on how to use Windows 8 and Windows 8.1, except in this video, I'm going to talk about Windows Phone 8, some of the things that I don't think Microsoft marketing does a very good job of. Uh, this here is a Windows Phone 8. This is actually a uh, Nokia 1520. In order to show the screen, I'm going to be using an application called the Nokia Beamer. So the screen will update about uh, four or five frames a second. It's not very fast, but it is uh, a lot better than some of the videos that show you what's going on on a Windows phone. Now, I don't think Windows marketing does a great job of explaining the stuff that goes on. So I figured I'd spend about five minutes and show you some of the cool things about the Phone 8. I'm going to uh, zoom in on the phone because you're watching this on a widescreen and I'm doing this on a portrait. There's the Beamer application. You see it's set right now to auto update. There's a little bit of a lag there. We'll do the best we can to edit that out. The first thing that I think that people need to do when they set up their Windows phone is put as many things as you can on the home screen. Uh, one of the great things about the Windows Phone is live tiles. You can see there that the weather is updating and the people's faces are updating. I can click on people, for example, just hold my finger there until all the other tiles fade away and then the people tile changes. You know how the other tiles are kind of jiggling around there? I can move them. I can click on the little arrow here on people and make that tile smaller. I can make it really, really small. I can make it large. I can hold it down and move it somewhere else. Here I'm going to move it down and the other tiles are going to get out of the way. Again, I'm going to hold my finger down, move it back up, let go and the other tiles get out of the way. You have a lot of flexibility. It's a lot of fun to go and find an application like, for example, uh, here's a news application. I can click on that, make it smaller, click on my Facebook application to the left here and make that one maybe larger. And you see I get a nice large wide tile. I can come down a little bit farther looking at another tile, my local scout. And you see that that tile only has the option to be small or medium. So newer applications have the opportunity to be larger. If I click on Flickster Flickster has small and medium choices available. Here's my Fitbit application showing me how many steps I've done today. I've got my trip with a flight coming up right now. If I scroll down a little bit farther, I've also got what are called secondary tiles. So I've got things like podcasts. So these are the music application, this nightly news right here, the radio lab podcast, This American Life. Each of these are secondary tiles to the music application. I've been able to pin those directly. So let's go, for example, over to the right. I'm going to click on the A here, and that's going to bring up all the letters of the alphabet that I have apps for, and I'm going to hit M for music. Now I'll click on music and videos. I can click on podcasts then a favorite podcast, I'm going to hold my finger down until it says pin to start. And now I'm going to pin the Moth podcast to the home screen. We're going to switch automatically back over to the home screen. It's going to drop all the way down to the bottom and we can see the Moth is there. I can make that podcast big or small and then have it find a place somewhere on my home screen. You'll notice right below it there on the left, I've got a Amazon Kindle icon that's rotating back and forth between the Kindle icon and the cover of a book. If I click on that book, it's going to go not just into the Kindle application, but it's going to resume right back on the page that I left off. I'll go ahead and click back. Let's go back up to the top and talk about people. I can click on people. Same thing as before, I can click on a letter and get my alphabet. 
but I can go sideways and have groups of people. So I've got family members, for example. I can click on a particular family member or pin an entire group of people, just my favorite people, for example, to the start, then make them larger, and then I'll get updates from those favorite people directly. So if I click on my friend here, let's click on Lovey. Notice the link at the bottom of the screen there. I'm going to click on that link. And you'll notice that I've got Lovey on Facebook, Lovey's page on Twitter, two different pages, as well as the uh, Lovey personal account that I keep in my Microsoft Outlook. If there was another Lovey, let's see if there is, there's another Lovey Gmail. That's Lovey on Skype, in fact. Because I've installed the Skype application, that is part of my context. So now I'm going to close back and we can see Lovey's profile. If I scroll down, you notice that I can text her, I can Skype her, I can write on her Facebook, I can even talk to her on either of her Twitters or send her an email. And you'll notice that at the top there it says Microsoft, Facebook, Skype, Twitter, rather than thinking about going to Facebook to write on Lovey's wall or going to Skype to call Lovey or going to Twitter to talk about her, I can just go to the person. So it's people focused rather than application focused, which is really interesting. I can also go into what's new. I can see all of her information, her tweets, her Facebooks, her emails and things like that. Now if I go to my wife, for example, and you'll notice in history, I see voicemails, calls, texts, emails, all from the same person. Again, person focused, and you'll notice that I've got five different versions of my wife in the different social accounts all combined into one. Again, I think about it in terms of the person rather than the application. Now I can still certainly use the Facebook app. I have a Facebook app. Or I can use the Instagram app or the Twitter app. And I can also switch between them. I can hold down the back button. This is the button at the bottom of your phone. And I can switch between these applications just by swiping. And with newer versions of the software, I get an X above and I can hit that X and then close that application. And that'll go away. The last thing I want to point out is the games area. Games that have the term Xbox in the green bar along the top let you get achievements on your Xbox. So if I go over here, it's going to sign me into my Xbox. You'll see my Xbox gamer tag and then my sleepy Xbox guy. I'm going to touch him, wake him up. There we go. Now he's going. And if I go and pick a game like Modern Combat, this is going to turn on its side now. And I'll continue my campaign in Modern Combat. I'm going to pause that game and go to the menu. Then switch out. Go right back over to Twitter. Switch out again. And go back to my game.
hit the home button, I'm back out here, and then finally I'm going to click on myself, you can see my face down there in the lower left corner, it says 25. I'm going to click there, I can say post an update, and I'll pick both Facebook and Twitter, hit OK, post an update, And then when that gets sent, it goes automatically to Facebook and Twitter. Then I can come over here to Notifications, and you'll see I've got Twitter and Facebook notifications all at the same place. And of course, I can click on those and comment without necessarily having to go into the app. This is just a few minutes tour of Windows Phone 8. Uh, kind of the stuff that I wish we'd see more in, uh, I guess, in marketing videos uh, instead of people dancing around. Uh, I'll hopefully do more videos if you like these in the future, uh, and feel free to sound off in the comments if there's a particular area of focus or features that you'd like me to talk about. Thanks again, and please do explore the rest of this YouTube channel.